Welcome to Geologia da Terra, or Geology of the Earth. I am Fabiana Richter. Hi everyone. So, when we study an outcrop where we see sedimentary rocks, we observe that there are always patterns in the way that uh, the layers are stacked on top of each other and also there are textures and there are sedimentary structures uh, and all of those aren't there by chance, right? So they're the product of the way in which each of those particles was eroded, transported and then uh, deposited in that location. So today we will speak about the two main types of uh, sediment transport. The first one is the transport by fluids, and the second one is the transport by gravity mass movements. We will also give some examples of how this transport occurs, including uh, how dust is deposited in the Amazon forest from uh, the Sahara Desert, and also we will talk about uh, an environmental tragedy that occurred in Brazil due to mass flows of sediment. Um, this will be very important for us for when we speak about uh, how fluids behave. And after that, uh, this will be important for, for when we speak about uh, the sedimentary structures. So let's do it. All right, like we just mentioned, today's episode will be about sediment transport. And we say that this transport can be caused either by fluids or by gravity. However, we must keep in mind that sediment transport will always occur under the effect of gravity and will also depend on the types of fluids and fluxes that may be carrying sediments. So the important thing for us is to determine which of the two processes play the greatest role in transport. And that is why we divide the transport into two categories and we say that either the particles are transported mainly by the movements of fluids and, and these fluids entrain the sediments like air, water and ice or mainly by the effects of gravity. Water is the main and most important mean of sediment transport and transport occurs basically anywhere where water flows, like in rivers, lakes and in the ocean. This video shows, for instance, the movement of the currents in the Mediterranean Sea with data from NASA. This moving marine water carries a huge volume of sediment within it. And here in this other video, we have an underwater view of water flow in a river in Japan. Water flows can be strong enough to carry both fine-grained material in suspension and also coarse particles at the base of the flow. Thus, they have the potential to carry particles for thousands of kilometers. An extreme example of the magnitude of transport that can be reached is observed in the Amazon River mouth. This river, which flows into the Atlantic Ocean, accounts for 20% of the global total discharge of rivers into the ocean, which means a discharge of 120 to 300 million liters of sediment-filled fresh water every second. This generates a sediment-rich plume that has an area of 1.3 million kilometers square and flows mainly northward into the Caribbean region. Air is another important mean of sediment transport, which occurs when wind carries dust or sand over some distance. Because wind transport capacity is limited by air density, the larger the grain size, the smaller the transport capacity of the wind. Winds are responsible, for instance, for the formation of beautiful sand dunes in arid regions. However, such transport can become dangerous when high-velocity winds have the power to carry large amounts of sediment and form sand and dust storms. Now, when we consider long-distance transport, dust transport by winds is much more significant because of the small grain size of dust. This video here, made from data obtained from NASA's Calypso satellite, shows the impressive 16,000 km transport of dust from the Sahara Desert into the Amazon rainforest. It is estimated that each year 182 million tons of dust leave the Sahara, and 15% of that, or 27.7 million tons, reaches the Amazon basin. This transport is extremely important for the forest because the dust is rich in phosphorus, which is an essential nutrient for plant growth. Ice transport is very significant in polar regions covered by ice caps and in mountains with glaciers. The ice also behaves fluidly, but moves much slower when compared to the movements of water and air. 
but because it has high viscosity, ice has the ability to erode, incorporate and transport large amounts of clastic sediments from the bedrock on top of which they are moving. Alright, so far we've talked about the cases in which sediments are carried by fluids. Now let's move on and talk about the second way sediments are transport, which is by gravity mass movements. This occurs when the main factor determining sediment mass movement is gravity. And this happens both in subaerial and subaqueous environments. In fact, there is a spectrum of mass sediment transport by gravity, which includes three main groups, rockfall, slides and sediment gravity flow. Rock falls and slides are not directly caused by the movement of fluids, as shown here in this video of a rock fall in Gansu province, China. However, gravity flow of sediments involves movement of sediment masses occurring with fluid interaction, as shown here in this video of a debris flow that occurred in Chile in 2015. We are going to talk about that spectrum of mass movements in more detail in a future video. But now we will focus on the most famous mass flow that has ever occurred in Brazil, which took place in 2015. The most striking example of the destruction caused by a mass flow characterizes the greatest environmental tragedy in the history of Brazil, initiated by the collapse of the Fundão Dam on November 5, 2015, at the Germano Mine, the city of Mariana, Minas Gerais. The dam collapsed, according to the Brazilian government agency for law enforcement, due to operation errors and negligence of the company that controlled the Germano Mine, the company Samarco Mineração S.A., as shown by the video, the Fundão Dam collapsed and discharged a large volume of iron ore tailings into the Santarém Valley, where another dam called Santarém Dam was located. It is estimated that 62 million cubic meters of mud made up of iron ore tailings moved downslope into the valley in the form of mass flow, destroying the subdistrict of Bento Rodrigues, where 19 people died. There are some videos of this mass flow reaching the Camargos district, where the subdistrict of Bento Rodrigues is located, and from those videos we can grasp the mass flow destruction potential. Bento Rodrigues was the most affected place in the region, but the destruction went far beyond that area. The mass flow volume was so large that it was capable to reach and contaminate the Rio Doce River Basin 100 km away in a couple of days, and after flowing for 500 km, it reached the ocean in the state of Espírito Santo on the 22nd of November of 2015. It is estimated that mud originated from the dam collapse will continue to be discharged into the ocean over the next decades. Alright, so you may have noticed that there is something in common between these ways of transporting sediments, right? Both the so-called fluid transport and the so-called gravity transport involve at some point interaction with fluids. Therefore, in order to really understand how this transport works and at which point the particles stop being transported and end up being deposited, forming what we observe in outcrops, we must first understand the behavior of the fluids. And this is going to be the subject of our next video, which, by the way, brings us to the end of this video today. So today we spoke about sediment transport and the types of transport by fluids and by gravity. Thanks for joining us. Leave your like and comments below. And if you enjoyed watching this video, subscribe to the channel.